In this problem, we're going to be finding the expected value of a continuous random variable, but we'll be have one extra step. So we saw that the definition of the expected value hinged on knowing the probability density function. In this case, we're only given the cumulative distribution function, but that's not a problem. We can combine the definition of the probability density function with the definition of expected value. So remember, the probability density function of our random value is just the derivative of our cumulative distribution function. This is a good time for you to pause the video and from here apply the definition of expected value to find the expected value of this particular continuous random variable. No really, I'll wait. The probability density function is also going to be piecewise. When x is less than 0, my cumulative distribution function is constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. And similarly, when x is bigger than a half, my cumulative distribution function is constant, the derivative of a constant is zero. So my probability density function is also zero if x is greater than one half. So this tells me all of the values of x that are taken by this event are between zero and a half. I never get a value less than zero and I never get a value bigger than one half. Between zero and a half, the derivative of this function is just two x plus three halves. So now that I know the probability density function, I can find the expected value just by using the definition of expectation. The definition uses an improper integral, but again, in this case, we have a lot of areas where this is just zero. So I can break this up as negative infinity to zero, xf of x dx, plus, 0 to 1 half x f of x dx plus 1 half to infinity x f of x dx. And the reason I've chosen to break it up here is that this is 0 on this interval and 0 on that interval. So this whole thing is 0 and that whole thing is 0. So I just need to evaluate the area under the curve from 0 to 1 half of x times f of x dx. And on the interval from 0 to 1 half, I know that my probability density function is 2x plus 3 halves. So the area I need to find works out from, works out to the area under the curve from 0 to 1 half of 2x squared plus 3 halves x. Now one notice that it sometimes feels a little funny to differentiate and then immediately afterwards anti-differentiate, but remember we differentiated big F and then we multiplied it by X. So I really do have a, a different function here than I had here. This linear term didn't change because differentiating it got rid of the X and I multiplied by X, but all the non-linear terms do change. I differentiated this and got a two and then multiplied it by an X. So the antiderivative is x cubed times 2 thirds plus x squared times 3 quarters. And we're evaluating that from 0 to 1 half. So this is 2 thirds times 1 half cubed, which is an eighth, plus 3 quarters times 1 half squared, which is a quarter. So this is 4 over 16 times 3 plus 9 over 16 times 3, which is 13 divided by 48. That is our expected value of this continuous random variable. So now that we have this, let's just do a quick check to make sure that it's actually reasonable. 
let's go back to thinking about our probability density function. Here's that probability density function we found. It's zero when x is negative and zero when x is bigger than a half. And in between, it's a line pointing up. So if I were to take a whole bunch of trials, I'm choosing this number randomly between zero and a half. Because my probability density function is increasing, I have highest density closer to a half and lower density closer to zero. So if I'm going to do the same trick I did in the last video and sort of break this up into two intervals, I'm going to have more values that are greater than a quarter and fewer values less than a quarter. So my average value should be more than a quarter. I'm averaging up all these values between zero and a half, and more of them are on the bigger side. So my average should be on the bigger side. So 13 over 48 is strictly bigger than 12 over 48. So at least this makes sense. It seems like it's in roughly the right area.